Hi, my name is Isham Joa from Olbo University in Denmark, and I'm going to talk about innovative heating and cooling systems based on caloric effects. We really want to increase the efficiency of our heating and cooling systems for building space conditioning and the production of domestic hot water. And for that, heat pump systems are great. We have to improve their sustainability and their cost effectiveness. Heat pumps are great at providing heating and cooling to buildings. The heat pump market is continuously increasing, and this market is currently dominated by vapor compression systems. However, those systems have certain challenges with the current refrigerant that they're using, in terms of flammability, explosivity, toxicity, and greenhouse gas effect. There are alternatives to vapor compression systems. Some of them can have very high COP, can be miniaturized, also have silent operation, and have no liquid gas refrigerant issues. Some of those alternatives are based on caloric effects. Caloric effects are large adiabatic temperature change in certain materials when a specific external field is applied or removed to that material. The four main caloric effects are electrocaloric effect that occurs when there is a variation of the electrical field, the barocaloric effect which appears when the variation of hydrostatic pressure, the elastocaloric effect that appears when there is a variation of uniaxial mechanical stress, and the magnetocaloric effect which appears with a variation of the magnetic field. Those caloric materials can be formed as a porous media and placed in a regenerator or a heat exchanger that allows bidirectional fluid flow. By alternating the application and removal of the field on the caloric material and flowing a heat transfer fluid in both directions through that porous caloric material, you can recreate a caloric Brayton cycle, which is an active caloric regenerative cycle for a caloric heat pump to transfer heat from a heat source to a heat sink. The different steps of a typical caloric heat pump cycle are as follows. At first, there is a temperature gradient within the regenerator. Then a high external field is applied to the caloric material. Depending on the caloric material, it has to be a magnetic field, an electrical field, pressure or stretching. The application of that external field increases the temperature throughout the entire regenerator. Then the heat transfer fluid is pushed from the cold source to the warmer heat sink. The heat transfer fluid circulates in the heat sink and therefore transfers some heat to the heat sink. The external field is then removed from the caloric material and the temperature drops in the entire regenerator. The heat transfer fluid is then pushed back from the warm side to the cold side and circulates in the cold heat source, therefore absorbing some heat from the heat source. And we're back to the initial state. And that's how you transfer heat from a cold heat source to a warmer heat sink with a caloric heat pump cycle. Systems based on caloric effect are fairly new technologies. and There is an only a limited number of research groups that are working on the topic. Those heat pumps do not have the same degree of maturity as conventional vapor compression system, but the reversible nature of caloric effects can allow for quite very high theoretical COPs. It also has a potential for quiet and low vibration level operation, miniaturization, part load control, and no use of harmful or greenhouse effect refrigerant. The magnetocaloric effect was the first caloric effect to be observed, and that's why it's the most mature of the caloric technologies. It has recently gained a lot of popularity within the scientific community. In 30 years, there have been around 100 prototypes that have been built and tested. The design of the current best prototypes for magnetocaloric heat pumps are rotary systems with fixed regenerators and rotating magnet assembly. You can see on the right a schematic of a typical magnetocaloric heat pump with the rotating magnet assembly on the top and below the regenerators and under the pipe and valve system. The current performance of the best magnetocaloric heat pump prototypes are quite impressive. In 2021, one prototype gave a cooling power of 340 watts for a temperature span of 10.3 Kelvin and a COP of 6.7, and a power of 950 watts for a temperature span of 5.6 Kelvin and a COP of 7. This year, a prototype gave a power of 265 watts for a temperature span of 14.8 Kelvin and a COP of 3.97, and a power of 445 watts for a temperature span of 7.3 Kelvin and a COP of 15.9. The elastocaloric systems are much more recent technology. 
but they have been gaining a lot of attention recently. And they are considered by some as the most promising alternative to vapor compression heat pumps. Elastochondroic heat pump, they use a metallic superelastic shape memory alloys that do not contain any rare earth material. The elastocaloric technology is quite new and the first prototype was presented in 2012, but it has a good potential for the miniaturization of cooling system. In 2018, a direct active heat recovery system for ventilation was tested with a power of 250 watts, a temperature span of 10 kelvins and a COP of 9.5. The electrocaloric heat pump technology is very, very new and still at the stage of proof of concept. At the moment, only 20 small scale prototypes have been built. And currently it has very low cooling power and very limited temperature span below 10 kelvins. It has a great potential to create miniaturized cooling system without any moving parts. In 2017, a miniature electrocaloric cooling had a power of 0.64 watts with a temperature span of 1.4 Kelvin and a COP of 13. In 2020, a cascaded electrocaloric cooling had a power of 0.8 watts for a temperature span of 2.7 Kelvins and a COP of 9. And finally, the barocaloric heat pump is an embryonic stage technology. There is at the moment no barocaloric heat pump prototype. Although baroque effect has been observed in many materials, it has yet to be proven to be applicable. However, it has the potential of being coupled with other caloric effects to create multicaloric systems. This figure gives an overview of the performance of caloric heat pump systems when compared to conventional heat pumps. You can see the COP as a function of the temperature span between the heat source and the heat sink. The full circles are experimental data, while the rings are simulation data. Vapor compression heat pumps have typically a Carnot efficiency between 40% and 60% for building application. The performance of most caloric heat pump prototypes is often below 20% Carnot efficiency, and with a maximum temperature span of 30 Kelvin. However, for a temperature lift around 20-25 Kelvin, the best magnetocaloric heat pumps have a COP that, ha that is similar or higher than vapor compression heat pumps. Simulations suggest that magnetocaloric heat pumps could maintain a 60% kernel efficiency for higher temperature spans of 50 to 60 Kelvin. The best elastocaloric heat pumps prototypes have a kernel efficiency of around 20%. Two of those prototypes can reach around 40% efficiency for temperature lift of 10 to 16 Kelvin. The best electrocaloric heat pump prototypes show promising COPs of 9 to 14, but for temperature lift and effective power that is insufficient for building application. However, theoretical studies suggest that an adequate temperature span for space heating and cooling can be reached with electrocaloric heat pumps. And finally, there is no available experimental data for barocaloric heat pumps, but simulation data suggests that such technology could sustain a 40 to 60% Carnot efficiency for temperature lift up to 40 Kelvin. On this figure, you can see the heating or cooling power of a system as a function of its temperature span. And one can see that only the prototypes of magnetocaloric heat pump systems can actually have heating power that are compatible with building applications. On this slide, you can see the COP of the devices as a function of the heating or cooling power. And similarly to the previous slide, you can see that only the current magnetocaloric heat pump prototypes have a heating or cooling power that is compatible with building applications. Caloric heat pump technology has made tremendous progress in the last decades. The large scale magnetocaloric heat pumps now show performance that is similar or superior to conventional vapor compression systems. However, the system have yet to prove their cost competitiveness and sustainability superiority against mature vapor compression systems. At the moment, only magnetocaloric systems have been proven experimentally that they are suitable for low temperature space heating and cooling in buildings, but elastocaloric and electrocaloric systems are very promising. Although very promising, there is still a lot of work to improve the caloric heat pump technology to create new caloric materials new manufacturing processes for the refrigerant, new active regenerator geometries, to find new engineering design for actuators, pumps and auxiliary systems, to reduce the parasitic energy and heat losses, to improve the energy recovery systems, and to look at the coupling between multiple caloric effects. 
thank you for your attention.